Hello and welcome to Soul Symbols. Um, my name is Shelley. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, today I am posting a video for day five of the 31 days of tarot. Um, what it is is it's a, a, a video blog sprint that's held every day in the month of January. Uh, there's a list of questions, and what you would do is if you participate, you go ahead and answer the question uh, with a video post every day throughout the month. And um, it is just kind of a way, um, a nice way to um, connect with um, tarot and oracle readers, uh, card readers here on YouTube. And uh, it's just kind of a nice way for us all to connect uh, over our craft. Now today is day five and the question is, what has, um, what has tarot taught you um, in the last decade? So between 2010 to 2019, what has tarot taught? taught you. Now, um, I, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. Um, I actually learned tarot when I was a teenager. And then I, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, I did that traditional thing where I went with kind of a real pretty deck <laughs> at first. And then um, I later, you know, went with a more traditional deck. Um, the, the deck that I actually uh, learned with was the uh, Morgan Greer Tarot. And, um, but what it was is that I, I really, I picked up and, and learned it um, at that time. And then I kind of got away for it, from it from, for many, many years. And then I, it, I really got back into tarot in the last, uh, about the last two years. But I had studied it a long time, you know, a long time ago, and um, I had learned it. And um, and you know, um, a, a very good tarot reader that I know from a Renaissance festival ha held here in my state um, introduced me to the Morgan Greer Tarot, and I learned. Um, I just learned so much from it. I, I I picked up a lot, and you know, I I learned how to read the cards. Now, when I, the reason that I kind of revisited tarot or got back into it was in the last two years, um, you know how when you have a hobby, it's a creative outlet. It's something that allows you to express yourself and it kind of allows you to get your mind off things that are troubling you or it kind of just puts you in a headspace that you can be creative and, and kind of learn, you know, kind of do something that is expressive of yourself. And I have other hobbies. I, I've, I do, I make cards, I, I sew. Um, if you watch my channel, you'll see that I make bags for all of my cards, um, and I scrapbook. And I, I'm, I'm a writer by, I, I've written books, I've written uh, novels, and what was happening is in the last two years, I went through a period of a lot of loss. Um, I lost my dad uh, about a year and a half ago, and then uh, at the beginning of last year, this time last year on New Year's Day, I lost my my paternal great aunt and I lost my maternal grandmother. So, and then uh, six months after that, I was preparing for uh, the funeral for my dad. So the last year, 2018 and 2019, were were times of very very deep change and loss. And I turned back to tarot because I was, I was doing my normal creative outlets. I was sewing, I was, uh, you know, scrapbooking, but I needed something that was going to exercise my psyche. And I needed something that I could kind of put in a, almost in a self-analysis kind of way, that kind of outlet. And I felt like reading cards was was in a way it was it it was multifunctional in the fact that it was the interpretation of symbols. It was like reading a story, which is you know what writers do. We create stories, just like just like you can take words and put them together and create entire new worlds. <laughs> you can take symbols and put you and you see it when you throw cards. You can throw three cards and three cards in a row can create a story. And I just I 
I wanted to revisit, I also was kind of revisiting, um, sometimes when you feel lost, going back to something that you used to love to do is a good way to begin. Um, either that or if you don't know what you love to do, you can always dabble, you know, you can always just kind of play around and see what, what your interests are. But I did, I, I, I picked up my tarot cards and I just felt like reading the symbolisms and creating the stories and all of that just really it, it, it gave me a space to 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 mourn to grieve to understand myself better to understand the circumstances better and to just kind of come to terms with where my life was and by doing that it had been so long since I had actually visited um, I you know since I had revisited the cards I went ahead and I went to I turned to YouTube because you know that's where I learn <laughs> um, YouTube is very I, I just feel like anything you want to know about you can learn here and um, and I did I I, I went to YouTube and what happened was I started just watching videos on how to tarot just to kind of refresh and then I started watching videos you know uh, card readings about anything I I was watching I got sucked into card readings about you know you know what are your energies messages from your spirit guides and you know uh, your next seven days and um, I even watched you know I'd watch relationship readings just because um, I, I watched the readers were so kind and they were the the interpretations the way they read the cards were just so inspirational it taught me so much but um I, and i'll tell you i i listened to i would i would watch on my phone card readings and as i was driving you know to to funerals and driving back from funerals and before i'd go to bed i would just it was a way to it was a way to watch and learn and get out of my head and connect and it was i can't tell you what a comfort it was um at a time when i, I was feeling really really lost the the card readers were a comfort to me and and there's and the, it's funny I, I follow a lot of readers now on youtube now but um and it's the same readers and i love their shows i love every single channel i follow there um but so you know long intro short <laughs> sorry but i just wanted to to get that out there because um what tarot has taught me in the last decade and, and in particularly the last two years is first it it tarot has taught me that you are not alone um it has taught me that there are people out there who understand and who get it who have had the same life experiences who can look at the symbols in a card and give you very very in-depth interpretation of that and and i was so grateful to have you know again i i, I had gone through so much loss and i just to have someone it, it was at a time when there was you know you could talk to friends and family but when you feel that kind of alone you feel like there's a part missing and you really need to talk to someone or you really need to turn to something and to pull cards for yourself and to learn how to do pull cards and to um so you know it the first thing that it taught me is that you are not alone the cards can comfort you and the second thing that it taught me was that the cards are personal. The cards are personal. If you want to go on YouTube and watch a reading, you can do that and no one no one can see you. The messages that you get from that reading are all for you. You know, take what we always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. And that's what I got. I, I, I pulled and I, I I would just absorb the knowledge. Um, and then, you know, and again, and I'm so grateful that you know it was there for me at a time when i was feeling very very alone and very in in need of guidance now the second thing that tarot taught me is you know what does it mean <laughs> when you look at a symbol you know and and this is for tarot and oracle and this is this is the deck i learned on but you know when you throw a card and you say okay you know page of pentacles okay what does that mean what are the symbols you know what does the red mean what does the background mean what does the pentacle mean 
Um, it gives it, it every single read. Every single read gives you new interpretations. You know, it, the cards around it, um, and it's and it's amazing. I, I just learn all the time. It, it it teaches me to look closer, and it teaches me to, you know, analyze the symbols in my world. Um, to analyze the symbols in my world, to the symbols in the cards, and to say, how does that reflect? You know, why why am I relating to that? You know, what if this coming up in a reading, what does it mean? You know, what does it mean? And I always say that similar to like a Rorschach test, you know, when you think of psychology, there's a lot of psychology in reading symbols and reading cards. It is, it is in essence a storytelling game. But isn't it amazing how games in our life, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, if you play Monopoly, if you play card games, Car games speak to you, symbols speak to you. And I just think that when you look closer and deeper at them, you will learn new things about yourself by what you see, by what you see in those symbols and what, those, and what symbols are around you. So the second thing it taught me was to look closer and, you know, get the meaning, get the meaning from it. Um, the third thing that Tara taught me in, in the last decade is to dig deep. It taught me to look at these symbols and to really feel what, what I saw. What you see in the cards is personal. How you react emotionally to them is personal. If you're going through something, if, you, if you're going through a hard time and you feel lost and you see the death card, when you're going through what feels like a betrayal and you see the seven of swords, it's like, okay, what does it mean? Does it mean someone's running away from something? Does it mean that you're being betrayed? Does, do you feel like you're being betrayed? You know, it's like, what, what does it mean? And dig deep, you know, dig deep. Look at these images and say, okay, what does this feel like? And why, why is it invoking that emotion? Now, the fourth thing that it, that Tarot has taught me is what is the literal meaning? <laughs> um, there are times, and, and this happens with both um, Tarot, Oracle, and with Dice. Sometimes I'll look at something and I am so in the analogy mindset, you know, like I look at it and I see, you know, strength, oh, holding back, you know, invoking, you know. Um, what if it means that sometimes it gets very literal and it might be that you will actually see a tulip or maybe you'll actually see a fish, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so the fourth thing that it's taught me is that sometimes the cards can be very literal. They can be, you know, sometimes it is what it is. And definitely if you ever get a card that, you know, like sometimes when you're using different decks and you pull, you know, one card and then you ask for a clarification and that same card comes up again. Um, I've learned that's, that's something that I've learned is sometimes it just is what it is. Sometimes the, the answer is right there in front of you. You may not want to hear it. You may, but you know, there's, there's not, sometimes simple is the answer, right? Sometimes it just, it is what it is. <laughs> and the last thing that Tarot has taught me is, um, and particularly Oracle too, and um, uh, this is kind of a palm stone, this is my amber stone, so I always like to hold it. I, I wanted to kind of hold it. There was something, um, you know, uh, in this read. But um, the last thing that Tarot has taught me is how to not take things so seriously. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of the what I do um, is is very deep. You know, you're you're connecting to energy. You're 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 discovering answers to problems. You're trying to plunge the depths of what you're feeling and what you're going through. And and it again, again, it it is. It's just kind of like a little mirror. You know, what you see is personal. Uh, I can throw one card, and and you know, five different people could see five different messages in that one card. But as I'm reading and as I'm getting these messages, sometimes the universe is, is coming through with just the message of lighten up, 
you know? Uh, that is something Tarot has definitely taught me is that sometimes you need to either laugh at yourself or laugh at the circumstance. Sometimes it is, it's, that's what you need to do. You just need to, you need to kind of, the irony of it or just the humor in it um, it is kind of a, a um, it is kind of a, a laugh or you cry kind of feeling, <laughs> and the more that you can do that, the more that you can laugh, and uh, you know, yeah, it's almost like you know, don't be so don't be so stodgy, <laughs> don't you're gonna. I think it's its way of saying you're gonna get where you're gonna go, right? Why not have a little bit of fun on the way? You know, enjoy the journey. You know, I know that's that's a little bit of a, you know. Uh, it's a little bit of a cliche, but you know, you can have fun. You can have fun. The other thing is have fun with the cards too. Um, one of my favorite readers, one of my favorite readers, she always, um, uh, that's the other thing is that when you, you, you know, when you laugh at yourself, maybe, maybe you're in the middle of a read and, and you're just, you're, you're goofing or you're stumbling over your words. Um, you roll with it roll with it, right? Laugh. You know, you're, you're having, you're having a day, you're having a moment, you know, just loosen up, loosen up, you know, laugh at the situation, laugh at yourself. Um, sometimes as these cards come up, you know, <laughs> you know, you might see something funny. And again, all of these, all of these cards are so traditional. And I have one reader who was like, yeah, and, you know, Knight of Wands, he's over there with a stick. <laughs> and it's like, and, or, you know, the, the King of Swords, well, he's got his bird, you know, it's like, why not, you know, poke fun at it a little bit, you know, it's like, um, you know, tarot, tarot is, you know, is, is a, it's a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful tool. And, um, but on top of it, you know, you do not have to take it seriously if you don't want to, you know, none of this is telling you how to live your life. It's just kind of, again, almost like dreams. I always say symbols are like dreams and your unconscious speaks in symbols. It doesn't speak in words, you know, in, in your own head, you think that you're, you're thinking in words and you're not. You're thinking in symbols and images and subconscious. Um, it's actually proven psycho psychologically. Um, children up until the age of 10 do not have a conscious mind that filters. They, it's all unconscious. That's why kids say the darn, darndest things, right? That's because they, they are speaking from an unfiltered, unbridled part of their brain. And it's a part of their brain that's... that's um, that is imaginative. It, it, it remembers things in, in memory and in pictures and in symbols. And that's what tarot does. And when you see a symbol, it can trigger something in you. One, one symbol that could mean something to someone else, positive, and one symbol can mean something that was a bad memory to someone else. And, and the fact that these pull these things out, and if you're experiencing something and you turn to the tarot to analyze those feelings, you know, it is therapeutic to sometimes not take it seriously. This, um, you know, I know a lot of people, um, it, it just, it's, it's, you know, it's not telling you how to live. It's not predictive. It's, you know, a lot of people use it. I know it's div divination and, you know, um, you can take it as energy, but energy follows thought and thought goes where you direct it to. So you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And nothing that these cards will pull out will ever predict or force your life to go down a certain path. So you can most definitely laugh at it or make it, you know, make it light when you, when you need to. And that's, that's a very, you know, it's a healthy thing. But okay, guys, so I hope I didn't get too long winded. But those are the five things that I've learned or that Tarot has taught me in the last decade. And I truly thank you for joining me. And just as a closing note, let's go ahead and go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and throw a card. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So we got the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Cups. And I do, I think this, this sums it up perfectly. You know, what I've learned from the tarot in the last decade is no matter what the anxiety, no matter how trapped in your head you are, you know, go ahead and, and you know, look for that, that emotional fulfillment, look for that joy, 
you know, wor work it out, you know, work out the anxiety. I think that's a really perfect message. I'm glad that came out. All right, guys. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. I hope you can stop back by tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's question is, what are your most, uh, what is your top five most anticipated tarot or oracle decks of 2020? And oh, that's gonna be a good list. So I hope you can join me then and I'll see you then. Bye.